Welcome back to episode 3 of the Connects Robot build series. Where we left off, I was messing around with making the tape as fast as I uh, possibly could, but it kind of grinded the gears on the motor. So I decided to speed it down a little bit. Right now it's still going faster than it used to um, from the previous tests. Right now it's just going the same speed as the motor shaft. And there's the gears there. And I haven't tested it out yet, so let's try it. Okay, so it didn't grind any gears this time. And there it is going really fast. It looks like it works pretty well still, going that speed. I always have to get a view of the whole tower. There's it moving fast again. I'll have to rewatch the video to make sure it didn't mess up at all. That clip is what happens when there are two pins 10 chain lengths apart, kind of like what I did before. Except now, this shaft spins about 24 degrees for each chain link. So it would spin 24 degrees if I did that. I like that a lot better than the slower speed of the tape. <clears throat> and um, I do plan on making that maybe be a little bit better, maybe more like 11 degrees. But I think that's enough testing for now. One thing that I'm really getting tired of doing is having to reset these pins back to the middle position because, well, it just takes forever to reset all these pins and there's about 800 of them. So I'm not going to want to be doing that manually. And what I'm going to do ne next then is make a way for the chain to slowly go along and have a wedge on each side kind of like that and as it goes along these pins will be pushed back to the middle so this is going to be an erasing module that erases the tape and this will only have to be done if you want to make a new program on it the best place to do this is right before the pins so I have this down here that I tried working on I'm not actually going to make it down here though because it's so tight and compact and I can't even get this out there we go you can see it right there so it was supposed to fold up out of the way and then when I want to erase go in but the problem is that this chain even though it's on the gears right here it goes side to side quite a lot and that just makes it only push push it like that much and that's not enough what I'm going to do instead is about right here, which is pretty close to the pins. I'm going to have something like this, where these things fold out by default, and then when I want to erase the tape, it'll fold in. And that gap between the green connectors is just enough for a red connector to fit in between. And so that will keep the chain centered, and then the wedges will be on the sides. And that's kind of how I have the orange connectors here, but I'll make it actually work when I attach it to there. Before I finish this completely, let's get a good view of it. So here's that orange connector that will um, be a wedge to make a pin go back to the middle. And the green connectors keep the tape centered. And when I'm not wanting to erase it, and this means most of the time this will be up like that 
and I have the same thing on the other side. I've gotten most of the erase module finished. All I have to do is attach these rods to this gray rod with gear so that I can control the whole thing with just one lever. But anyways, before I do that, this might be really hard to see, but yeah, it's too dark on that side. But they come down like that, and they'll do that at the same time. And this linkage is really nice because it locks it in place once it gets down there. So the chain can't um, make it come back out of position. I also had to add a green connector above the orange and that causes the, or it prevents the chain from moving upward which would cause it to not be centered anymore. So right in here somewhere, there it is, I've made a pin go in that direction. And maybe you'll be able to see it reset. So right now it's just now touching the orange connector. And now it's coming out the other side and there it is. And I don't know if you can tell that it's the same level. Or that it's in the middle like the one before it. But... If I just do this a little bit, then it, you can tell that it doesn't activate any of the pins or the levers, so that'll be a nice thing to have. One thing I do need to do is probably make something that attaches to the tape that causes it to move slower, because I really don't want it to move at that speed, or at the normal speed when I'm erasing stuff. I think that might make there be too much friction in the middle and cause too much strain on the tape and other parts. So I have to decide if I will have a gearbox in between the motor and right there or if I'll make something that comes out that side and attaches back to there. I have everything on the erasing module finished. It's all connected up so I can just pull this orange connector and they both go down at the same time. Also, you might have noticed that this area is the same, and I said I was going to change it. I've decided not to make a motor, or this motor, control um, the lesser speed tape for the erasing, because that would just be a lot of unnecessary gearboxes right here, and I really want to reduce the amount of friction between the motor and the transmission. So what I'll probably do is either make it crank operated, so that would be from here, or I might just put a separate motor for each of these off to the side that controls it from there and that would allow it to turn at a slower speed and erase a lot better than if I was to just run that motor. There's also the concept of since you really only want to erase a program when you're writing a new one I'll probably just make the erasing come on while I'm in writing mode, and I know I haven't really talked about the write function yet. I plan on having an assembly around here where the gears end, right after the read head, and this will be the write head. So it'll have something that can slide back and forth like that, and sets the pins either that way or that way. And this is why erasing while writing will work well, because as this is down, that will be erasing the previous program as the tape is moving this way. And this up here will be writing the new program, so the old program will be back on that side. And as it comes up, it will erase and then come around and have the new one written right here, and that'll go up and go through the tower. In order to be writing the program and teaching the robot its movements, we're going to have to reverse the direction of the outputs, or the joints, so I'm going to be using these transmissions to do that. However, since I really don't want to add anything else to here because it might make these pins not switch it as well, I'll have some sort of external controller for this. Maybe it will 
be like two pins that kind of come down here and lock on to this and then that will turn it in either direction like that so having these pins or these levers still attached to here while I'm writing the program really doesn't matter because they won't really do anything or make a difference but when I'm reading a program I will definitely want whatever thing controls that to be disattached from it. In order to write the program I plan on having a control panel with a crank for each motor and a lever for each motor and it's of course it's not going to be right here but this is just for a demonstration so this crank will always turn the tape in the same direction and it will be hooked up to this rod but whichever way this lever goes either that way or that way that will switch this transmission from that assembly over here that I talked about and so if we want to program the robot to be moving this way we can switch the lever like that and that will be linked up to the transmission and that will switch it whatever way that is and start moving as I'm cranking and since the tape is moving at the same um, rate that this is moving no matter what speed I turn the crank it will always be spaced apart correctly this will be a lot better than having it be motorized because I'll be able to program it slowly and reach the point that I want to reach um, more accurately. Here's what I've come up with for the right head. The reason I want to have it where it is, it is a tricky area to work in, but it'll have the gears in the middle that keep the tape from moving side to side. And I even have these uh, pieces on the ends in order to keep the gears even more centered than they already were. So you can see if it goes like that, it'll do that. And it can also go the other way. Of course, it's never going to write the pin if it's already offset. The erase head will take care of that. But just to explain about why this area looks kind of bulky, the reason I want this right head to be as wide as it is is because when it's completely centered and not being used, even if a pin is slid all the way in a certain direction like that, it won't touch any of the edges. And that'll be good because then I don't have to make something that deactivates it. The other thing is this bar back here is simply to keep it angled. Maybe I can get a good view of that but you can tell that it's angled slightly that way and that's to line up with the gears better because at that particular spot the gears are slanting downward, downward just a little bit and one of the features of the right head is this is going to be kind of hard to see but the piece that actually pushes the pin over is the red connector back there and the green connector up, up above it is to keep the tape from or the pin from slinting upward like that. That helps the tape to not twist because that was happening if you just were to press the pin like that it kind of do that. But with that piece above it it goes right on top and goes over smoothly like that. One thing I'm really wanting to make sure of with this right head is that a pin can be adjusted whether it's at the front of the connector so that would be like right here or if it's in the back so that would be back there and that will make it easier to do any adjustments to the tape if necessary and you'll know more about what I mean by that and why that's significant later on but from here just know that it would be a lot better if this pin didn't have to be lined up to the exact same spot every single time. In other words, it has some flexibility on where I can adjust it. Next I'm going to make something to control how this slides back and forth. I'll probably have a linkage around this area since we already have a bunch of stuff over here. I'll just put it on top and it will probably attach to that red rod and slide that back and forth. The other linkage I need to make is something to control this, which I've kind of ignored, but this is one of the first um, transmission 
elements that I made at the beginning. I also need to make something to control this orange connector right here, which is the erasing module. I think I can make it go through here if I just make a rod go all the way back. So you can see it through there. But we'll have to see how much room there is. I have all of the control mechanisms finished and there's a lot going on here so I'll start over here. This one right here controls the erasing module so it connects right there and it goes through here and it's pretty nice that there just happens to be enough room for this but there is. And so it goes down like that for me pushing it in and out. Maybe I can get a better view from up top. It's going down, and it's going up. It's pretty hard to see, but you can almost see it in there. And it will only need to go up about that much or that much, not like... that's That right there is pretty much as far as it goes. So moving on to this side, I have started on these output gears right here that will hold the chain. And that is what it looks like from down here. This yellow gear attaches directly to the gear in there that is the transmission gear. Maybe, yeah, you can see it there. I might have to end up making these gears out here more, just in case, or if this part of the transmission isn't strong enough, because it can kind of... Uh, go back and forth like that, but we'll see later on. This one up top right here controls the input switching, so that is either the motor input or the crank input, and that's going to be down there. And the detent is in here, it again uses an orange splicer, and there's a snap cap on the end of that white rod that it slides, slides across. It actually takes advantage of the weak spot of the blue connector, which is that slot right there because it has a gap in it which you might be able to see and so when I switch it you can see the white rod moving and so that part is purposefully flexible to allow it to snap in better and the last thing is this one right here this controls the right head so let's see if I can yeah so that is me Pushing it in and out like that. It hooks up around here. I decided it would be easier just to make levers here instead of using gears like there. It uses up a lot less space too. I wanted to make sure to have the optimal location for these linkages just to make it um, balanced give it the right um, leverage and that's why all of this stuff right here is kind of weird looking and this right here is sticking out just to allow a motor to go in a different position. I think I covered that in episode 2 where a motor might have to go um, laying flat like that on one of these um, modules. After building all of these things, what is next? So I'm going to have a control panel that comes out that way, and all of these rods will be extended to reach that. And that control panel is going to be where I choose to either write a program or run a program or really do whatever needs to be done. And the first thing I need to figure out is how I'm going to control this write head. Because when you write a certain step on the program, there's always a pin that goes in that direction, and then there's one that goes in that direction to turn it back off. So I might have a crank type of thing where it can go that way, and then when it gets to the next pin, it'll go the other way in order to put a, a pin back to the other side. I'm at about 20 minutes of video, so I think that is the end of episode 3. I'm really happy with how I was able to just cram all of this stuff into this one area, and it's really satisfying to see it just slowly get more and more complex over time, just building on top of the previous components. Hopefully this is as big as this area gets, and 
I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm trying to keep it all underneath, or all underneath a red rod height that is right here. If I keep it as low as possible, that will just mean that the robot has more space to move around. So that's why I'm trying to keep it all low to the ground. The other cool thing about all of this is that you can make it as far out as you want, or I should say you can make the storage tower be as far back as you want by just making this loop of chain longer and longer. And so if you wanted, you could have the storage tower be on the opposite side of the room, very far away from the robot, to give it most the most space as possible. Thanks for all of your feedback on episode 2. I know I haven't really done much testing with this in this episode, and there's been some concerns about the tests that I did in the previous episode, but I'm going to address those later on once everything is more complete. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.